For the past several years, a group of dedicated American slap fighters have been developing a new extreme sport in undisclosed locations across the Midwest. Most athletic commissions in the U.S. don't recognize this new sport, so the fighters have been competing underground. Still, the fan base for our sport has grown. We are now an international sensation. Our fighters don't compete for glory. They are here to test themselves. This is not a sport for the weak. This is Slap Fight. Welcome, Slap Fight fans. We are coming to you from an undisclosed location. I'm your host, the Space Cowboy, Jason Jones. Get ready for Slap Fight Redemption. Yeah! Oh! Hello, fight fans, and welcome to Slap Fight Championship Redemption. My name is JT Tilly, and I will be your host tonight for an evening of unprecedented slap fighting. We've got two incredible main event fights and an eight-man tournament to crown the number one contender at light heavyweight. Stay with us, folks. It's going to be a great night with Slap Fight Championship. It's time for the first quarterfinal matchup of our Slap Fight Redemption Light Heavyweight Tournament. In this first fight, we'll see Nashville, Tennessee native Battle Axe stepping up to the barrel to face our super fan Ricky, all the way from Terrytown, Louisiana. Slap Fight correspondent Jason Burgos of MixedMartialArts.com had the opportunity to chat with both fighters last night during weigh-ins. At the slap fight weigh-ins, professional axe thrower and aptly named newcomer Battle Axe took to the scales and weighed in at 201 pounds for a slap fight debut. His opponent, fan turned slap fight veteran, the Bayou Bastard from Terrytown, Louisiana, weighed in at 219 pounds. Bayou, uh, talk to me about how much preparation you did for this big third fight. You're becoming a veteran now. What was the training and preparation for this third fight in Slap Fight Championship? Ever since I lost against Coach, I've been looking over my videos, making sure I practice while I'm weekend, and you know, work on my strong suits. Going from your first fight, second to this one, is there a mental aspect of this, this sport that you've developed, that you found, that you've realized, that you maybe didn't realize at first, and you're hoping to use to get that W at Redemption? Yeah, I feel like the intimidation factor is a very big proponent of it. That's why I try to appear the least intimidating as possible. I'm joined by a first-timer Slap Fight Championship Battle Axe. Uh, Mr. Axe, sir, talk to me about getting prepared for this debut in a very unusual sport, not a common sport around the world. What was your preparation like for this first fight? Um, I've been preparing since September. Um, been trying to work uh, two jobs while I was training. So uh, just any time I can get in, uh, put in the work. You, like several other fighters on the card, are going from fan to fighter. How did you first find out about slap fighting and what were your original thoughts when you saw this new burgeoning sport? Um, it was actually from a guy on YouTube. Um, I ended up seeing a uh, slap, I guess, compilation of uh, Ricky and uh, ended up going on to face uh, Coach Killa and everything. So uh, I felt like it could be a pretty good time. This being such an unusual sport, not many people are fully even aware of it at this point. But did you do any specific techniques to get ready for this fight? Did you call upon some of the veterans? How did you do? Like, what were you doing to get ready for this fight with the Bayou Bastard? Um, I train mainly technique. Um, as an axe throwing coach, technique is absolutely everything. Um, most people think you throw with your shoulder, you end up throwing with your core more than anything. So, um, I mean, kind of the same thing with uh, slapping. It looks like an arm workout, but it's full body. Ladies and gentlemen, from Nashville, Tennessee, this is Battle Axe! Please welcome to the barrel, 
from Terrytown, Louisiana, he is the Bayou Taking a look at the tournament bracket for Slap Fight Redemption Light Heavyweight Tournament, our first quarterfinal matchup is about to begin. Battle Axe versus Bayou Bastard. Let's go down to the barrel for the coin toss with our lead official, Kyron Bowen. And Battle Axe wins the coin toss. He will slap first. All right, folks, let's take a look at the rules of slap fight. First off, no clubbing. All competitors must land their strikes with an open hand. The heel of the hand may make contact but cannot extend past the chin. Next, no stepping. Feet must be planted shoulder width apart, and there can be no pivoting or stepping when striking. And finally, no flinching. Small reactions are allowed, but any movement that affects the power of the strike is a foul. All right, fight fans, here we are with the first quarterfinal matchup of our light heavyweight tournament. We've got Battle Axe versus the Bayou Bastard. Referee Kyron Bowen is going over the rules with our competitors, and then we'll get started. Battle Axe will have the first slap. And here we go. Battle Axe siding in. One! Here's his windup. Oh, and it's a nice slap from Battle Axe. Right off the bat, he rung Ricky's bell. Ricky's going to return fire now at the bottom of round one. This is Ricky's third appearance at Slap Fight. He's been working on his technique, and as you can see, he's got an interesting style. And then he smacks Battle Axe in the top of the head. He's going to receive a warning from Kyron Bowen for clubbing. That's just going to be a warning, but if he does club again during the match, he will lose a turn. Top of round two. Battle Axe has 60 seconds to clear the cobwebs and step back to the barrel. And here we go with round two. One, two, three. Another hard slap from Battle Axe. Got one stepping violation. Okay, our line referee, Q Davidson, has called a stepping one, violation. That's going to be a two, warning for Battle Axe. And Ricky in round two with just a little bit of a turd of a slap there. Subtle flinch by Battle Axe, but it wasn't enough of a flinch to be a foul. A little mutual respect here, and we're going to head into the top of round three. One, Here's the windup. Okay, now we had a subtle flinch here from the Bayou Bastard. Doesn't look like it was enough to, to require a warning or a penalty. And as we head into the bottom of round three, you see Frank the Tank, legendary Frank the Tank in the corner of the Bayou Bastard. One, two, three. Okay, oh! Ricky has found his mark. And in the bottom of round three, Ricky with a nice fundamental slap. Okay, Battle Axe is going to get his cotton ball replaced. All of our competitors wear cotton balls in their ear to protect their eardrums from damage. And another hard strike from Battle Axe. I had an opportunity to talk to Battle Axe at the weigh-ins last night, and he says that his axe throwing technique is very similar to his slapping technique. Okay, we've got another hard swing from Ricky. I did think there might have, yeah, it looks like he's going to have a violation here, a stepping violation. At Slap Fight Championship, you cannot redistribute your weight. You've got to keep your feet spaced, and you cannot step or pivot when slapping. So Ricky's going to re receive a warning for stepping. 
And if he steps again, of course, he will lose a turn. One. Round five. Two. Three. Oh, another big oh. shot from Battleaxe. Wow. The Bayou Bastard better be careful. Battleaxe is going to run away with this One. fight. <laughs> and Battleaxe returns fire with a big shot. Very, very close match between the axe throwing coach and the super fan. We are now in round six of a 10 round fight. One, two, three. And Battleaxe with another fantastic shot. Ricky with no break, returning fire. One, two, three. Oh, and a swing and a miss. Battle Axe dodges out of the way. That's definitely going to be a penalty here. There's going to be a warning for flinching. That's the first warning for Battle Axe for flinching. One more and he will lose a turn. One, two, three. Okay, another good shot. It did look like it. All right. Line referee Q. Davidson is going to give him a stepping penalty. That is his second penalty One, for stepping. Two, he will lose a turn. Three. Oh, and then he had his hat knocked off by Ricky. Just add insult to injury. Oh, and now we've got Ricky with a stepping violation. So as it stands right now, the Bayou Bastard has now lost his round nine turn. But Battle Axe has lost his round eight turn. So that means now Ricky will have a second slap at the bottom of round eight. You good? And here we go. One, two, three. Oh, another great shot by Ricky. Little bit high, but Ricky's starting to find his power. Now Battle Axe will have his round nine and his round 10 slap in a row because Ricky has lost his round nine turn. One, Here's the wind up. Two, three, and another four, fantastic three. slap from Battle Axe. Very impressive with his debut. Battle Axe looking fantastic at the barrel. Let's go, let's go. Woo. Ricky's ready for the second slap. One, Deep breaths. Two, three, and another great slap by Battle Axe. And you can see the intensity on his face. He's feeling competitive. Now Ricky has an opportunity to return fire here. This will be Ricky's last slap, round 10. And he spins Battle Axe hat around. Doesn't quite knock it off, but maybe some points for style. And we're going to go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. Fantastic fight. Well done to both fighters. Advancing to the semifinals, Battle Axe! Congratulations to both fighters on a fantastic performance, but Battle Axe moves on. Battle Axe and the Bayou Bastard traded blows for 10 rounds in a match that had its ups and downs. But in the end, it was the precision striking of Battle Axe that made the difference. Our super fan, the Bayou Bastard, held his ground and he fought valiantly. But the Tennessee native made his mark at the barrel today and will advance to the semifinals of the Slap Fight Redemption Light Heavyweight Tournament. In our second quarterfinal matchup, Shemokin, Pennsylvania native and proud Marine, Shemokin Thunderclap battles Marine Special Forces, The Butcher, in a 10-round quarterfinal tournament matchup. Jason Burgos interviewed both competitors at weigh-ins. Let's take a look at the footage. Last night at the weigh-ins, U.S. Marine Shemokin Thunderclap hit the scales weighing in at 196.1 pounds. His opponent, The Butcher, another promotional newcomer, followed him to the scales and weighed in at 209 pounds. 
This match will be the battle of Slap Fight Newbies at Slap Fight Redemption. I'm joined by another Slap Fight Championship first timer, Shamok and Thunderclap. Mr. Thunderclap, uh, talk to me about how long and how much preparation time did you do in advance for this really big debut in Slap Fight Championship? I've been preparing by striking, a, you know, the punching bag and a medicine bag and doing a reading this book called Iron Palm Techniques. I mean, pull out of like an old tour. If I would have asked you 10 years ago, if you are going to compete in a real deal slap fighting bout, what have you told me? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I have a lot of angst and stuff like that. I was looking for some sort of fight club or something to get into, like MMA, boxing. Even I was, I was even trying to get up a kumite, you know what I mean, where I get a, like, like what they did back in the day with 50-man, 100-man kumite, stuff like that. But not too many people want to volunteer to get beat up or fight you, so it was kind of tough. I've been looking for something like this <laughs> for a long time. <laughs> Going from being a fan now into going into being a competitor, is there any mental aspect of slap fighting that you've seen or have learned in training for this that you hope to tap into on fight night? Ah, oh, hell yeah. It, it takes a very special person to get smacked in the face and take it and be very well poised to deliver the same smack back to somebody in the same, you know, intensity. I am joined with a slap fight championship debutante in The Butcher. Mr. Butcher, um, talk to me about the type of preparation you did for this first time of competing in a actual live slap fight. Actually, not a lot. Uh, I take care of a farm, and uh, you know when you deal with a lot of you know large animals and moving bale five eight hundred pound bales of hay, you know creates things like that overnight. You know it don't happen. It takes time. You know, it don't take, you know, lifted weight, brute strength. It takes repetitive motion. You're looking ready and prepared to throw down. What kind of experiences have you had in life, be it athletic or whatever, that makes you feel you are ready to throw down in this slap fight debut? I've trained multiple times, multiple years, close quarter combat. Um, with a lot of my background that I have that I can't really talk a lot about that. You know, it caused me to do a lot of high intensity training for long periods of time. So I believe with everything I've been through and what I've done has really prepared me for a time that we're in right now. This is gonna be broadcasted to millions on fight, on pay-per-view. Is there any added pressure you're feeling going into not only a debut, but a debut on pay-per-view? I think before the fight, there's gonna be some thoughts of jitterness, you know, thinking that people is going to, you know, large amounts is going to be seeing all this. But once you see your opponent in front of you and you're only focused on one thing, everything else disappears. Ladies and gentlemen, from Shamokin, Pennsylvania, by way of Philadelphia, Shamokin. Thunder Class! Please welcome, from parts unknown, The Butcher! Continuing with our tournament bracket, the winner of this Marine versus Marine showdown will face Battle Axe in the semifinals. Let's go down to the barrel and our lead official, Kyron Bowen, for the coin toss. Kyron Bowen having a quick conversation with our competitors before the coin toss. How's it feel? Uh, tails. Tails it is. Shamokin Thunderclap wins the coin toss. He's going to have the first slap. Thunderclap is a proud U.S. Marine. Very excited to be here. And we're going to see what he has to offer here in round one. Two, three. 
Oh, a big shot from Shemokin and Thunderclap, and the Butcher goes down hard in round one. Oh, my. The Butcher has already popped up, but I'm not so sure he has any idea where he is. And it looks like Thunderclap's going to receive a warning for stepping. Now, that's just going to be a warning, but if he does step again during this match, he will lose a turn. Middleweight champion Coach Killa in the corner of the Butcher. And it does seem that the Butcher has gathered his bearings, and he may step back to the barrel here to return fire. Okay, the Butcher here with the bottom of round one. We're going to see what he has to offer here. Here's the wind-up. One, two, three! Oh, and a karate chop to the carotid here. That's definitely going to be a violation. And the Butcher is going to receive a warning for clubbing. That's one warning for clubbing, one more club, and he will lose a turn. No karate chops to the throat here at Slap Fight Championship. Okay, Thunderclap just found out he's going to get to slap again, and immediately Van Halen started playing in his head. Here we go, round two. One, two, three. Oh, another big shot from Shemokin Thunderclap. This time the Butcher stays on his feet, but he was affected. Okay, Coach Killa is urging him to take his break here. The Butcher does have 60 seconds to regain his composure and step back to the barrel. Shimok and Thunderclap already at the barrel, ready. And you can look at the face of Shimok and Thunderclap and you can see that he is here to compete. Very popular among the other contestants. Shemokin Thunderclap two, is a crazy person. Three, oh, and he just got slapped in the throat. I can't help but think that's going to be a penalty. Okay, Kyron Bowen is going to call a penalty for clubbing. And now the Butcher will lose his third round slap. And that means that Thunderclap will now have two slaps in a row. Here we go, round three. Oh, it looks like the Butcher goes down again. Coach Killer holds him up for a few seconds here, but that is definitely a knockdown. Okay, I think referee Kyron Bowen has seen enough, and that's going to be ruled a knockout, and that's your winner, ladies and gentlemen, Shemokin Thunderclap. Moving on to the semifinals, ladies and gentlemen, Shemokin Thunderclap. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, your winner, moving on to the semifinals from Shemokin, Pennsylvania, Shemokin Thunderclap. Smoke and thunder clap. What do you got to say to your fans? Yeah. This goes out to 600 years support battalion, Folsom, Pennsylvania. Get some Marines. Yeah. Folsom, PA. Definitely represented hard tonight. What do you have to say for all the competitors lined up for Smoke and Thunder Clap? I'm here to kick ass and take names. Yeah. He's kicking ass. Yeah. He's taking names. He's Smoking Thunder Clap. Yeah. Congrats.
With the left side of our tournament bracket filled in, our first semifinal matchup is determined. Battle Axe will face Thunderclap for the opportunity to compete in the final round. But first, Young James, our number one seed, faces six foot five tennis pro and newcomer White Simba in our third tournament quarterfinal. An outspoken slapper from Lehigh, Utah, White Simba is ready to take center stage at Slap Fight Championship, but first, he'll have to get by veteran fighter and former champion, Young James. Last night at the weigh-in, Slap Fight newcomer White Simba took to the scales and the former tennis pro weighed in at 202 pounds. And his opponent, another slap fight OG and aspiring rapper, Young James weighed in at 226 pounds. I'm joined by a slap fight championship first timer in White Simba. Simba, um, talk to me about getting ready for this fight. Coming from a tennis background, how much did that play into your preparation? My whole fucking life, baby. I've, you know, the world just comes together and it just builds up into this, you know, this person and. I uh, just created this uh, slapping god, basically, and uh, I'm trying to take over the world with this shit, so. Simba, did any kind of training from your, te your tennis days come into play, or did you discover some new training techniques for this debut in Slap Fight Championship on pay per view? Yeah, I was, well, I haven't washed my hands in about a month, uh, and I've just been slapping everything that I possibly can, uh, trying to find the most human, human-like fruits and uh, go with those. As a person that's already an athlete, you know about the mental side of things. Do you see a mental side of slack fighting that's going to be a pivotal part of you getting a win at Redemption? Yeah, it's all mental, baby. I feel like, you know, I'm going to slap uh, James so hard, it's like going to explode every single brain cell in his head. So I'm, I'm going to keep that mental. It's all mental. I'm joined by a straight up OG of Slap Fight Championship, a young James Young. Talk to me about the, the, the preparation going into this fight. How far in advance you started getting ready for this return to pay per view? Uh, I was trying to get ready for it for a little bit, but I'm ready all the time. I'm ready to go. I want to show them what this Slap Fight means. You've been doing this for a long time, James. I mean, I would imagine there's not a lot of pressure that goes into this, but. Do you feel any extra pressure knowing this is going to be on pay-per-view? A lot of people are going to see it. Does it even rattle someone as experienced as you? No. I'm ready to go. All the fans I have, let's go. Be my support. Let's do it. Talk to me about the mental side of slap fighting. You've done it for so long. Is there a mental aspect involved with slap fighting that you maybe hope to, to tap into and use to your advantage at Redemption? I'm just going to let you know, I'm taking these mutton mitts and I'm going to show you why I have these hands for a reason. I don't have big hands just for fun of it. I can't use them. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing, weighing in at 202 pounds, from Lehigh, Utah, he is White Simba! Weighing in at 252 pounds from the mean streets of Harrison, Arkansas, this is Young James! We've moved to the right side of the bracket now. Our top seed, Young James, is all set to face tennis pro White Simba. So without any further ado, let's head over to the barrel and get things started. All right, we are back at the barrel with a very exciting quarterfinal matchup between the former champion, Young James, and the six foot five White Simba. Now, Young James did not make weight for the tournament, so White Simba is going to have the first slap by default. And this is going to be our first opportunity to take a look at White Simba. One, two, three. Oh, 
Oh, a fantastic slap by White Simba. Quite an unorthodox style, but effective. Okay, White Simba's going to get a warning for stepping. If you look in the top left-hand corner of your screen, you'll see that White Simba pivoted his feet during that last slap. Whoa. It's not allowed. Young James Two. is using Wolverine's technique. Three. Oh, Whoa. and Young James with a knockdown in round one. Now, White Simba did not fall all the way down to the mat. The corner man did Whoa. catch him, but any time your corner man touches you, we count that as a knockdown. So that will be one knockdown for young James using Wolverine's technique. Wolverine developed that technique. It's called the ax handle technique. And he used that when he fought Darius the Destroyer to draw out flinches. I've not seen anyone but Wolverine use that technique until tonight. And it seems to be working pretty well for young James. White Simba's made his way back to the barrel, and it looks like he's going to continue. So we're going to get started with round two. White Simba with One, the windup. Two, three. Oh! White Simba knocks Young James down in the second round. Oh my! Young James is hurt. He's trying to get back to his feet. He needs a little bit of help here. Holy smokes. Okay, we're going to have another penalty for stepping here on White Simba. That's his second stepping penalty, so he is going to lose his third round slap. And that's assuming that young James is going to continue. We've watched young James go 14 rounds with Wolverine. Recently, seven rounds with Frank the Tank. And to see White Simba lay him out in two rounds is outstanding. Young James is a tough fighter. There's no doubt he's going to continue. We're at the bottom of round two. He's going to stick One, with Wolverine's technique. Two, Here we go. Oh, and he clubs White Simba right in the neck. Now, that's not good. He's going to receive a warning for clubbing. Now, we're going into round three, but White Simba has lost his round three slap due to a stepping violation. And so, Young James is going to get to slap again here in round three. That'll be two in a row. That's going to be very difficult for White Simba. His very first match at Slap Fight Championship, he faces Young James. And now he's in a position to take two slaps in a row. So we will see how he fares. Young James is shrugging off his haters. And here we go. Okay, good slap, but White Simba eats it. Okay, White Simba's going to pull himself together here. And as we roll into the fourth round, White Simba's going to take full advantage of his 60-second break. And he's going to return to the barrel. Young James is the number one seed in the tournament. White Simba, a relative unknown. Round four. One. Here's the wind up. Two. Three. One. Oh, White Simba drops Young James again. And this fight is over, ladies and gentlemen. We have a knockout. Oh, my. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner by knockout, White Simba. And Young James is still on the floor. Holy smokes.
right, Simba, with an impressive fourth round knockout to Young James. Now, you are a newcomer to the Slap Fight Championship, and you have a background in tennis, and we saw a wild, unorthodox style that I don't know if we've ever saw at the barrel before. Do you think your background in tennis help you score this win against Young James tonight? I'm changing the game, baby. This is going to go far. You know, uh... I've been training hard for this shit, and that was easy as fuck. You know, Young James can slap, but it's Simba season, y'all. Simba season. He called it. Will it be game, set, match as he advances to the semifinals? White Simba shocks the fans by making quick work of Young James in a stunning upset, advancing to the semifinal round and establishing himself as the one to beat during the Slap Fight Redemption Tournament. Missouri native Lead Belt Chapman returns to the barrel after an injury forced him to take a long hiatus from the sport. His opponent in this redemption tournament is collegiate football sensation and slap fight newcomer Johnny Juice. Let's listen in as Jason Burgos interviews the fighters. At the Slap Fight Wayans, promotional newcomer Johnny Juice took to the scales and the former Division III gridiron veteran weighed in at 206.3 pounds. Slap Fight veteran and Flat River, Missouri native Lead Belt Chapman took to the scales and weighed in at 225 pounds. Johnny, talk to me about the, the training techniques you used in preparation for your debut. And did you go through a process where you realized some ended up being much better than others? Well, uh, when I knew I was coming on, I, uh, I asked uh, my strongest friends, you know, hey, give me your best shot. And, uh, you know, they did happily. Knowing that you're going to be on fight pay-per-view in front of millions, is there an added pressure? Because there's already pressure in the debut. Is there an added pressure knowing that too? Uh, I wouldn't say there's any... any uh, added pressure uh, you know that's what I'm here for you know put on a show so that's what I'm gonna do going into this debut yeah there's a lot of physicality but have you discovered maybe or, or thinking about a mental aspect of, of this game a will aspect of this game that you hope to use to get a W I mean there's gotta be um, <clears throat> you definitely gotta find find your zone if you get up there and you know you're, you're trying to prepare for the slap and you're expecting, you know, that pain coming. You're, you're going to get knocked out. You're, you're not going to have a good time. So you really got to push that down uh, while you're up there. Ladies and gentlemen, weighing in at 225 pounds from Flat River, Missouri, he is Led Belt Chapman! And coming to the barrel, he weighed in at 206 pounds from Canton, Ohio, Johnny Juice! Here we are at the barrel for our fourth quarterfinal matchup. 
Johnny Juice versus Lead Belt Chapman. The winner will face White Simba in the semifinal. Here's Kyron with the coin toss. And the winner is Lead Belt Chapman. All right, folks, let's take a look at the rules of slap fight. First off, no clubbing. All competitors must land their strikes with an open hand. The heel of the hand may make contact, but cannot extend past the chin. Next, no stepping. Feet must be planted shoulder width apart, and there can be no pivoting or stepping when striking. And finally, no flinching. Small reactions are allowed, but any movement that affects the power of the strike is a foul. All right, it's time for our fourth quarterfinal matchup. Veteran Lead Belt Chapman facing newcomer Johnny Juice. Our lead official, Kyron Bowen, is going to give a quick rules meeting. And if neither of our competitors have a question, then we'll go ahead and get started. The winner of this matchup again will face White Simba in the semifinal. All right, here we go. Lead Belt Chapman in round one. one Here's the wind-up. Oh, another club from Lead Belt Chapman. He's going to receive a warning for clubbing right off the bat. Lead Belt has had an issue with clubbing over the course of the last year. He's been forced to switch from left to right hands repeatedly throughout one, competition. Okay, we've got a great slap from Johnny Juice, but he stepped all over the barrel. And it looks like they're going to give him a warning as well. So far, we've got one warning for clubbing with Lead Belt and one warning for stepping with Johnny. One! Round two. Two! Three! Okay, now that was almost a club. It was kind of in the danger zone, but it, it doesn't look like the officials are going to call that. We're just going to keep it rolling into round two. And here's your wind up. One, two, three. And that was a fantastic slap from Johnny Juice. He's definitely finding his, finding his mark. Now we know Lead Belt Chapman does have a chin. He is a tough country boy. And he's going to return fire. Oh, a big shot from Lead Belt. And Johnny is hurt. He's trying to shake that off, but absolutely that staggered him. Johnny Juice is going to take advantage of his 60-second break. Lead Belt Chapman smelling blood in the water. And here we go. The bottom of round three. Johnny winds up. And another fantastic slap from Johnny Juice. He's found his mark and he is now finding his power. Lead Belt Chapman. Going to return fire in round four. Here we go. Okay, we got another club here from Lead Belt. Lead Belt looks upset about this. That's his second clubbing penalty, so he will now lose his fifth round slap. I can also see Lead Belt Chapman is nursing his right elbow. This has been an issue for him in fights before. I hate to see him go out like that. But it does look like he's going to continue to fight. Bottom of round four with Johnny Juice One, winding up. Two, three, oh, Lead Belt Chapman goes down. Johnny Juice has dropped Lead Belt Chapman in round four. And Lead Belt is going to tap out of this fight. And there's your winner, folks. Johnny Juice. picked up a big quarterfinal win against Lead Belt Chapman. You're advancing into the semifinals of this tournament. 
Lead Belt Chapman is no stranger to the barrel. You're a first timer here at Slap Fight. What was it like competing? Well, I was definitely a little concerned with his experience being a newcomer here, but nothing but respect for him. I'd be lying if I didn't say my face didn't hurt. Hurt like hell, but uh, you know, I'm really happy I could pull out the win here today on my uh, debut. Awesome, man. Well, you're going to advance. You're going to advance into the semifinals, and you're hoping to take it all the way back home to Canton, Ohio. What do you got to say back for your, to your hometown? Oh, uh, you know, just got to thank all my friends. You know, they helped me prepare for this. You know, gathered all my strongest friends to, you know, take shots on me, make sure I can uh, withstand these shots here from you guys. Well, you got it, man. Good luck to you in the future. Moving on, Johnny Juice going to take it back home at Canton, Ohio. Congratulations to Johnny Juice on his first slap fight victory. The Canton, Ohio native will now face White Simba in the semifinal round during his quest to become the number one contender at Slap Fight Championship. With both sides of the bracket now determined, our semifinal matchups have been revealed. White Simba will face Johnny Juice, but first, Battle Axe and Shimokan Thunderclap will square off for a shot at the final round. When we last saw Wolverine, he had just completely cleaned out the light heavyweight division with highlight reel knockouts of Archaic Death and Rocky Moore and big wins over Cody Fout, Frank the Tank, and Chris Dodson. He shaved his beard for the fans and put his belt on the line against the former champ, then proceeded to put on a slapping clinic before doctors stopped the fight and declared him the undisputed champ. A few months later, Wolverine vacated his title and entered the light heavyweight tournament, only to win it back again that evening in devastating fashion with a nine round war in the finals versus the current middleweight champion. Having earned undisputed status, a number two pound for pound ranking and the respect of the fans, Wolverine set his sights on the only man to ever defeat him. Number one ranked undisputed heavyweight king, Darius the Destroyer staring into the soul of Darius right now. One, Using a new technique. Two, the internet's biggest slap fan hosted while these two titans of slap slugged it out at the barrel in the most highly anticipated matchup in slap fighting history. Wolverine and Darius delivered, matching slaps round after round, blow for blow in the greatest slap paddle ever witnessed. The heavyweight title was on the line and these two undisputed champions went toe to toe, power shot after power shot without either showing signs of wear. With no clear winner emerging, these two elite slappers continued the pace until the bottom of the 11th round when Darius landed a huge shot. Hurt, Wolverine's eyesight began to flutter he gathered his composure and realized he needed to rally and finish the champion before doctors decided to stop the contest. With his left cheek swelling badly, he stepped back to the barrel and continued to fight, looking for a path to victory. Darius, seeing the opportunity to finish Wolverine, turned up the intensity, landing heavy blows and chipping away at the light heavyweight champ. As the fight approached the 20th round, Wolverine felt his chances at becoming double champion slipping away. He decided to push the pace and force Darius to fight at his tempo. And he takes them both with ease, as you would expect from Darius. Round 20, taking no breaks. Darius not going to his corner. I think he wants to end it right here. Oh, we're going back. Oh, my God. We're just getting right back into it. Darius 
getting hurt more watching the slaps than Darius does receiving them. Wolverine, though, is not in good shape. Darius just finds stretching out his jaw a little bit. That was a rapid fire round. In round 27, doctors stopped the fight against the wishes of Wolverine and declared Darius the Destroyer the winner and still undisputed slap fight heavyweight champion. Wolverine was gracious in defeat but left the event disappointed and wondering what could be next for the light heavyweight champion. Enter undisputed middleweight champion, Coach Killa. The Arkansas native exploded onto the American slap scene in 2020 during the light heavyweight tournament where he made his slap fighting debut. He advanced to the final round where he faced Wolverine for the title. The game newcomer battled with the champion, but his lack of experience seemed to be a factor as he had no answer to the precise power shots landed by the champion. Coach Killa stayed in the fight, delivering big shots of his own, but in the end, it was Wolverine who left the event center with the light heavyweight championship. After taking eight thunderous slaps from the champion, Coach Killa decided to throw in the towel and try his hand at a new weight class. The middleweight division was stacked with tough challenges for the newcomer. Powerhouses like Achilles, who Coach Killa chopped down in two rounds, sending his outspoken foe to the mat for a quick nap and nabbing his middleweight championship. Next came Big Mac, who took a seat quickly in his ill-fated showdown with the Arkansas native. The next big test came in the form of veteran slapper and mixed martial artist Chris Dotson, whom he dazed with a well-placed slap in round one and then dropped with a power slap in round two. Coach Killa had effectively cleaned out his division and was looking for the next challenge when event promoters offered him a heavyweight exhibition match versus Young James during the Titans Clash pay-per-view on Fight. In his heavyweight clash with Young James, Coach Killa proved that not only did he have the chin to compete at heavyweight, he had improved his skill set to the point where he felt ready to make a run at the only man to ever defeat him at the barrel. Following the Titans Clash event, Coach Killa issued a challenge to Wolverine. Undisputed light heavyweight champion versus undisputed middleweight champion. Both titles on the line. Winner take all. Wolverine versus Coach Killa. The winner becomes the first double champion in slap fighting history, and the loser will no longer compete at Slap Fight Championship. Our first semifinal matchup between Battle Axe and Shimokan Thunderclap has been canceled. The doctor has decided that Battle Axe has taken too much damage today and will not be allowed to continue in the tournament bracket. Shimokan Thunderclap moves to the finals by default and will face the winner of our next matchup. White Simba versus Johnny Juice. In the quarterfinal, Johnny Juice faced slap fight veteran Lead Belt Chapman and knocked him out in the fourth round to advance to the semifinals. Newcomer White Simba pulled off the upset of the season, knocking out Young James in round four and putting the entire division on blast. Could it be Simba's season? And now, Johnny Juice, the pride of Canton, Ohio, versus Utah's own White Simba. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing, weighing in at 202 pounds, from Lehigh, Utah, he is White Simba!
coming to the barrel. He weighed in at 206 pounds from Canton, Ohio, Johnny Dude. All right, here we are at the barrel with lead official and professional fighter Kyron Bowen. Damn. And the coin toss goes to Johnny Juice. He will slap first. All right, folks, let's take a look at the rules of slap fight. First off, no clubbing. All competitors must land their strikes with an open hand. The heel of the hand may make contact but cannot extend past the chin. Next, no stepping. Feet must be planted shoulder width apart, and there can be no pivoting or stepping when striking. And finally, no flinching. Small reactions are allowed, but any movement that affects the power of the strike is a foul. All right, fight fans, here we are back at the barrel for our second semifinal matchup. We've got White Simba fresh off of a stunning upset of Young James, defeating him by knockout in the fourth round. On the right side of your screen, you've got Johnny Juice fresh off of a knockout of veteran lead belt Chapman. Another upset, both in the fourth round, both by knockout. And these two newcomers are going to face each other right now in the semifinal to see which of them will face Shemokin Thunderclap in the final to become the number one contender. One, Johnny Juice with the windup. Oh, Johnny Juice with a big shot. And White Simba goes down in round one. Holy smokes. Okay, we're going to rule that as a knockdown, even though White Simba did not go all the way to the mat. And referee Q Davidson has called a stepping violation on Johnny Juice. Now, that's just going to be a warning, but if he steps again during this matchup, he will lose a turn. White Simba's back to the barrel for the bottom of round one. Still trying to shake out all the cobwebs here. Also needs to make sure his hair looks okay. Now again, that does count as a knockdown for Johnny Juice. Even though White Simba did not fall all the way to the mat at Slap Fight Championship, if your corner man touches you to assist you in any way, we count that as a knockdown. So that's one of the three knockdowns that Johnny needs for a TKO. White Simba's a tough kid. He's going to stay in the fight. And here we go with the bottom of round one. White Simba has such an unorthodox style. Being a tennis player, we've never seen anyone in slap fighting with this type of a background. One, Take a look at his backswing. Two, here he comes up top. Three, oh, a big shot by White Simba, and Johnny Juice goes down. Wow. Johnny Juice is out on his feet. It looks like his corner man is holding him up at this point. Okay, it does look like he's still cognizant. He's just he's just rocked. He's starting to get his bearings. He's got one minute to get back to the barrel, completely regain his composure, and deliver a slap to White Simba. And at this point, I'm not so sure if that's going to happen. Okay, I'll correct myself. It looks like he's okay. And that in itself is impressive. It's a big part of the slap game. Not only do you have to be able to slap you also have to be able to absorb the slap, and it looks like Johnny Juice has done that. Both of these young contestants have had knockouts earlier in the evening, and now they're facing each other. They've both got one knockout on their record and one knockdown against each other. In any other bracket, this could have been the final round. Today, it's our semifinal. And I'm excited to see what happens in round two. Here we go. One, two, three. Oh, my God, and it's a club. Johnny Juice clubs White Simba right in the jaw, right in the neck area. And you can tell by the look on White Simba's face that he did not appreciate that. Johnny Juice, on the other hand, looks like he's having some issues with his right elbow. 
Yeah, definitely Johnny Juice is having some issues with his arm. That's ironic considering that in his quarterfinal matchup with Lead Belt Chapman, that's exactly what happened with Lead Belt. White Simba looks recovered from the club. But Johnny Juice is thinking about withdrawing from this fight, actually. He still has a few seconds left to recover. White Simba is paying close attention to Johnny. I think Johnny's going to throw the towel in here. White Simba back to the barrel. And Johnny's out. Ladies and gentlemen, you have a winner. White Simba all the way from Lehigh, Utah, sweeping through the quarterfinals and the semifinals on his way to face Shemokin Thunderclap in the final round. Outstanding. Sending you straight to the finals to take on Shamoka under Clap. Listen, unorthodox style. You're going into the finals. Talk to your people. This shit's fucked. I'm not gonna lie. This is easy as hell. It's probably one of the easiest things I've done in my life. Yo, that's gonna be the best in the world. He's going straight to the finals. It's White Simba. Yeah! yeah! All right, friends, let's take a look at this replay. Johnny Juice, the pride of Canton, Ohio, stepping to the barrel as one of the favorites in this tournament. Tremendous power, a fantastic performance, but Johnny Juice was taken out by the tennis pro from Lehigh, Utah. White Simba with an incredible new style that we've never seen before. Tremendous accuracy, tremendous speed. This is an incredible new force in the slap fighting game. Ladies and gentlemen, your finalist, White Simba. We want to thank Johnny Juice for an incredible performance. We will definitely see Johnny Juice back at the barrel. But as for today, it's White Simba that will face Shemokin Thunderclap in the final round. And I cannot wait to see what happens. All right, folks, there you can see the tournament bracket completely filled in. What an incredible tournament it has been so far. In our quarterfinal matchups, we had four big matchups and three upsets. Unbelievable upsets tonight. Also, on the way to the final round, we've seen four big knockouts. And I cannot wait to see our final round between Shemokin Thunderclap, five foot six, and White Simba, six foot five. But first, we're gonna take a look at a featured fight, Frank the Tank versus The Bell. Last night at the Slap Fight weigh-in, Slap Fight Championship first-timer and heavyweight boxer The Bell tipped in scales and weighed in at 265 pounds. He was followed by Slap Fight Championship OG and People's Champion Frank the Tank, who weighed in at 255 pounds. To even the odds, the People's Champ will be slapping with his left hand against the first-timer from Florida. You have been around for so long, you've seen it all. Is there any added kind of mental preparation or is there just a deeper mental aspect of the sport that many fans may not even realize as you go into and after a slap fight? There's always some kind of mental place, um, not only just to continue to have the willpower to take slaps, but in order to just keep going and improve. You were tremendous at Titans Clash, an MVP performance in my book. Is there anything you think that, uh, you know, could top that performance at Redemption? Could you even be better at Redemption than you were at Titans Clash? I'm not even really concerned about that. Um, my concern is the fight that's ahead and the ones that if it tops it, then it tops it. If it doesn't, then I'll have one later on. Talk to me about the first time you heard about slap fighting, about slap fight championship, and made, what made you say, yeah, I need to get involved with that. I first heard about it from a YouTuber that, one of my favorite YouTubers, he did a video on 
the sat fight competitions in Russia. And ever since then, I've been looking into it. And then I went through websites, Instagrams, trying to find a way to get into it until I finally messaged the right person and ended up here. Coming into this sport as a fan, now as a participant, do you think you saw any mental aspect to the sport that uh, you hopefully hope to tap into on fight night? I mean, everyone else says there is, but I'm just having fun, so I'm just kind of here having fun, doing my thing. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is a heavyweight matchup scheduled for 10 rounds. Introducing first from Tampa, Florida, this is The Bell. And his opponent, he is a slap by people's champion from Fulton, Missouri, Frank the Tank! All right, folks, we are here with our featured fight and I am so excited to see how this goes down. It's the bell on the left side of your screen. 6'4", 265 pound heavyweight boxer versus Frank the Tank. Tails. And Frank the Tank wins the coin toss. All right, folks, let's take a look at the rules of slap fight. First off, no clubbing. All competitors must land their strikes with an open hand. The heel of the hand may make contact, but cannot extend past the chin. Next, no stepping. Feet must be planted shoulder width apart, and there can be no pivoting or stepping when striking. And finally, no flinching. Small reactions are allowed, but any movement that affects the power of the strike is a foul. All right, friends, we are back at the barrel with our featured fight. The Bell versus Frank the Tank, and this is the fight on the card that I'm the most excited about. I cannot wait to see what happens. Frank the Tank on your right, and the Bell on your left. First thing you'll notice is that there's a five inch height difference between the Bell and Frank. The Bell is a massive, massive man. Another thing you'll notice is that Frank the Tank has decided to use his left hand today. We've not One, seen that before out of Frank. Two, three, okay. I guess that answers that question. Frank definitely knows how to generate power with his left hand. He decided to use his left hand a couple of weeks ago. He let us know that because the bell had a lack of experience, Frank did not think that it would be fair to use his right hand. That's just the type of guy Frank the Tank is. He's such a friendly guy. Just a great guy to be the people's champion at Slap Fight Championship. The bell is also a great guy. But the bell doesn't mind slapping the piss out of you. And Frank now realizes that he's in a fight. I tell you, last night at the weigh-ins, these two guys became friends quickly. They're both very funny. The bell had us all in stitches. Uh, but today when he showed up for the fight, it was a different personality. Oh, my goodness. Frank staggers him. Okay, the bell had a tough time staying on his feet there. Looks like he's going to take a few seconds here, talk to his corner man. Today, the bell is being cornered by undefeated Puerto Rican kickboxer Melvin Bolito. <laughs> All right, the bell giving Frank a nice compliment. And uh, it looks like the bell is going to return fire in round two. This is about to be a fantastic fight. One, Here's the wind up from the two, bell. Three, oh, and another fantastic shot from the bell. Frank tells his corner man, hold my beer. Oh no. Okay, looks like we've got a stepping warning. Okay, I see it there. What happened is the right foot of the bell One, pivoted when he threw that strike. Two, three, and Frank with another left-handed bomb. Wow. Wow. Woo. 
Okay, we are in the bottom of round three. The bell just absorbed a nice hard shot. You can see where he's feeling it. I can't imagine that he would withdraw from the fight, but that definitely was a big, big shot from Frank. All right, the bell with the wind-up. Round three. three. Oh, Frank almost goes down. Okay, take a look at Frank here. Okay, it looks like we may have another pivot there with the right foot. Okay, that's going to be a penalty for stepping now. That's two penalties for the bell, so he's going to lose a turn here. The bell is going to lose his fourth round slap. But that's assuming that Frank's okay. Now, we're going to have to count that as a knockdown with Frank because his corner man did have to steady him. But Frank is okay. We're going into the fourth round, top of the fourth with Frank the Tank. One. Here's the wind up. And another fantastic slap by Frank. Oh my goodness, these guys are trading some big, big shots. Now Frank's shaking out his left hand. Frank's a gamer, so you don't really know if he's hurt that left hand or if he's bluffing. It's, it's a difficult to tell with Frank. Frank is a high level player in the slap game. Most experienced slapper on the planet, Frank the Tank. Oh man. And the bell eats it. Holy smokes. The bell just took two shots in a row from Frank the Tank. He had missed his uh, round five, excuse me, his round four turn. He lost it from stepping, stepping violation. One, now we're in the bottom two, of round five. Three, oh. And another knockdown from the bell. Wow. Okay, I want to explain what's happening here. These are technical knockdowns. Oh man, we've got another penalty here from the bell for stepping. I can understand why that's happening. That's a that's a fundamental striking technique. When you throw a right hook uh, or a left hook as a boxer, the way to generate power is to pivot that foot, and that's what the bell's doing. I'm sure it's not on purpose, but it is going to cost him another turn. He's now going to lose his round six turn. Frank, however, has had uh, his corner man has steadied him twice. So that means we've had two knockdowns, technical knockdowns, and he's got to be careful. One more knockdown and we'll have to call the fight. One, two, three. Okay, another great shot by Frank. Frank's shaking out his left hand again and the bell is struggling to eat these slaps. Again, the bell's in a tough position here. He has lost another turn. And so Frank's going to be able to take a another slap in round seven here. One, two, three. Ooh. And the bell stays on his feet again. Wow. Now, out of the last three turns, the bell has only been able to dish out one slap. We are now at the bottom of round seven, and the bell's going to go ahead and deliver a slap to Frank. Frank is at the barrel, and he's ready. And I have to say, I don't know if it translates uh, on the broadcast or not, but the Bell is a massive man. This is a huge kid. He is a hilarious kid. But today when he showed up, it was game time and he is ready to fight. Look at his face. One, Here we go with round two, seven. Three, oh, oh, Frank the Tank goes down. Oh, Holy smokes. The Bell knocks Frank down all the way to the mat. And I am so sorry, but that's going to be our third knockdown. We don't have a choice but to call this fight a TKO for the bell. Wow. And Frank looks like he wants to continue fighting, but I'm so sorry, Frank. That's the end of the fight. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner by technical knockout from Tampa, Florida, The Bell. All right, let's take a look at the replay here. 
Frank the Tank proved tonight that not only is he deadly with his right hand, but he is deadly with his left hand as well. Unfortunately, the bell came in from Tampa, Florida to eat those slabs for dinner and deliver some big, big punishment. That's exactly what he did. The bell is a big, big heavyweight with a massive wingspan, and he knows how to deliver big, big punishment with his slaps. Frank the Tank will remain the people's champion at Slap Fight, but tonight it's all about the bell taking out Frank the Tank in seven rounds with three technical knockdowns and a big TKO victory. Ladies and gentlemen, the bell is now a factor in the heavyweight division. In our first quarterfinal matchup tonight, we watched as proud Marine and Shemokin, Pennsylvania native Shemokin Thunderclap completely dismantled the Butcher in three rounds with two big knockdowns and a knockout to move into the semifinals. Shemokin Thunderclap is a scary individual, but he's also the smallest man in the tournament bracket at 5'6", 196 pounds. On the other side of the bracket, we watched as the tallest man in the bracket, 6'5", tennis pro from Lehigh, Utah, White Simba, knocked out Young James in the biggest upset of the year and then defeated Johnny Juice to move to the final round. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for our co-main event, the final round of the Slap Fight Redemption Light Heavyweight Tournament. White Simba versus Shemokin Thunderclap. It's going down right now. Ladies and gentlemen, Introducing, weighing in at 202 pounds, from Lehigh, Utah, he is White Simba! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, from Shamokin, Pennsylvania, by way of Philadelphia, Shemokin Thunder Class! All right, fans, anytime you have two knockout artists competing at the barrel, the coin toss is instrumental. And this time the coin toss is won by White Simba and he is going to have the first slap. All right, folks, let's take a look at the rules of slap fight. First off, no clubbing. All competitors must land their strikes with an open hand. The heel of the hand may make contact but cannot extend past the chin. Next, no stepping. Feet must be planted shoulder width apart and there can be no pivoting or stepping when striking. And finally, no flinching. Small reactions are allowed, but any movement that affects the power of the strike is a foul. All right, here we are with our co-main event and Slap Fight Redemption Tournament Final. This is going to be an incredible matchup. We've got Shemokin Thunderclap on your left and White Simba on your right. And the first thing you'll notice when looking at these two fighters together is that White Simba is six foot five and Shemokin Thunderclap is five foot six. That makes for an interesting combination. Now, White Simba did win the coin toss, and that gives him a huge advantage in the match. But Shemokin Thunderclap is not afraid. Look at his face. He's ready. Can he take one of these crazy slaps from White Simba? We're going to find out now 
It's round one. one. Simba with the wind up, Two. going up top. Oh! White Simba knocks down Shimokan Thunderclap in the first round, and Shimokan Thunderclap goes down hard. Holy smokes. Wow. White Simba with a big shot to start the final round. Oh my gosh. Let's listen in here. Okay, Thunderclap's corner man's going to pick him up here and help him get to his feet. He's going to have to get his bearings and get back to the to barrel in 60 seconds to continue the fight. White Simba's talking a little trash here, telling him it's okay to quit. Oh, no. Shimokan Thunderclap doesn't remember the first round. Okay, it looks like the doctor's going to stop this fight. Ladies and gentlemen, unbelievably, White Simba dispatches every one of his opponents to become the Slap Fight Redemption Tournament winner. the slap fight redemption light heavyweight tournament you went through that tournament only taking five slaps that might be a record what tell us about this is your first time or this is a new thing for you but i don't know if we've ever saw a slap that unorthodox and effective yeah i mean that was one of the easiest things i've ever done in my life you know uh work hard play hard uh i just want to thank my mom uh, for being so supportive and uh, yeah, get, get ready for some big shit coming. I got some big shit coming out. It's just the beginning, you know? Man, White Simba's got some big shit coming out. Stay tuned for more Slap Fight Championship. Yeah! Well, friends, I am in complete disbelief at what we've witnessed today. White Simba, all the way from Lehigh, Utah, walks through the competition at the Slap Fight Redemption Light Heavyweight Tournament. A big knockout of Young James, a dispatch of Johnny Juice, and a one-slap KO of Shimokan Thunderclap. Congratulations, White Simba. You're the new number one contender at Light Heavyweight. Coming up next, our main event, Coach Killa, the undisputed middleweight champion, takes on Wolverine, the undisputed light heavyweight champion. Last night, Jason Burgos had an opportunity to talk to Wolverine, and let's take a look at that footage now. Last night at the weigh-ins, legendary light heavyweight champion Wolverine took to the scales and weighed in at 210 pounds for his champ versus champ battle. His opponent and middleweight king Coach Killer weighed in at 221 pounds, 11 pounds over the contracted weight. You are a veteran of this sport, been doing it for a long time at elite level. Uh, were there any, you know, specific training techniques you used going into this fight that you feel will be, be beneficial on fight night? I uh, use a resistant band to uh, drop a truck, put a band in the back of the truck, and pull against the truck. So. Talk to me about this return to a pay-per-view main event. Is there any added pressure knowing there's a lot of people watching, a lot of people are going to see this? And also, is there any extra pressure that you don't want to lose a second in a row in a rematch to someone you already beat already? Uh, no, I ain't going to lose two in a row. I lost one, and it was, in my opinion, by mistake, so I ain't losing two. Wolverine, talk to me about the, the mental side of slap fighting. Is there a, a key mental aspect involved going into a slap fight, especially at the very highest levels of the sport in a two belt match like you're going to be taking part in? I think he's going to be a lot better. I mean, especially since it's for both the belts. I think it'll be, I mean, no, neither one of us want to let a belt go. So it's going to be, it's going to be a drag out.
Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for your main event. It is scheduled for unlimited rounds. Introducing first, he is ranked number three in the United States. He is the current and reigning middleweight champion from Mark Tree, Arkansas. This is Coach Killer. And introducing his opponent, he is ranked number two in the U.S. He is the current and reigning light heavyweight champion from Mountain Home, Arkansas. This is the Wolverine! Ladies and gentlemen, tensions are high at the barrel. This is a champion versus champion, title for title, loser leaves match, and you can feel the tension in the air. Damn. Coach Killa has just won the coin toss, and in a battle of knockout artists, that is a significant advantage. All right, folks, let's take a look at the rules of slap fight. First off, no clubbing. All competitors must land their strikes with an open hand. The heel of the hand may make contact, but cannot extend past the chin. Next, no stepping. Feet must be planted shoulder width apart, and there can be no pivoting or stepping when striking. And finally, no flinching. Small reactions are allowed, but any movement that affects the power of the strike is a foul. All right, fans, here we are with our main event, and I have to say, the tension is high at the barrel right now. Coach Killa and Wolverine putting both titles on the line, champion versus champion, title for title, and the loser of this match will no longer compete in the sport of slapping. Coach Killa won the coin toss. He's going to have the first slap, and that is a huge advantage when you're looking at two knockout artists at the barrel. Coach Killa looking Ron directly in the eyes. Ron is refusing to look at Coach Killa in the eye. And here's our windup for round one. Two, three. Fantastic slap by Coach Killa. Doesn't seem to phase Wolverine. Wolverine with no break is going to return fire. Bottom of round one. It looks like Wolverine's going back to his original technique. One, two, three. And a fantastic slap from Wolverine to start the match. Okay, it seems that Coach Killer was going to complain about a club there, but he seems to have talked himself out of it halfway through. Gonna go right into One, round two. Coach two, Killer with the windup. And another great slap by Coach Killer, but this is Wolverine. You're gonna have to bring something just a little heavier. Keep in mind this is an unlimited round matchup. Anything can happen. One, round two, Wolverine. Two, oh, Wolverine! Absolutely stuns Coach Killer. Coach Killer is still dazed. Oh my. Wow. Okay, jumping up and down when you're rocked is not the best idea. All right, ladies and gentlemen, shit just got real for Coach Killa. Both of these fighters are from Arkansas. Wolverine from Mountain Home. Coach Killa from Mark Tree. Coach Killa with another decent slap. Now these could add up if this if this fight was to go 15, 20 rounds. These little slaps from Coach Killer could add up, but I'm not so sure that Ron's going to allow that to happen. One, here we go, round three. Two, three. All right, we've got a flinch here from Coach Killer, and the officials are going to call it. We're going to keep the match going, but Coach Killer has received a warning for flinching. 
That has been an issue for him this past year. Coach Killis seems to be feeling the pressure here. He's asking if he can take off his shirt. We'd rather you didn't. One, Round four. Two, three, one. Okay, again, these are fantastic slaps by Coach Killa. These are the kind of slaps that have been knocking out middleweights for the last year and a half, but they're not making one, a dent with Wolverine. Two, three, okay, Wolverine with another fundamental slap. A little bit of a, of a flinch there, but I'm not so sure that it affected the power of the slap, so they're going to let it slide. The struggle is real here with Coach Killa. Wolverine is very slowly One, just chopping him two, down. Three. Okay, that was a good slap, but you can see the barrel is moving, which means Coach Killa has likely stepped. Okay, let's take a look at that up in the top right-hand corner. Yeah, you can see he moved both his left and his right feet during that slap. So he's going to be giving a warning for stepping. He's got one warning for flinching, one warning for One, stepping, no warnings two, for Wolverine. Three, oh my oh, God, Wolverine with another huge bomb. Coach Kill is going to take a little walk here and think about this. Got water back there if you need it. Wow. These are two of the greatest slappers in the United States. Pound for pound, ranked number three, Coach Killa, and ranked number two, Wolverine. Coach Killa is asking how much more of a break can he have. He's going to take advantage of this last 30 seconds. And we are rolling into round six. Coach Killa seems to have forgotten that it's his turn to slap. Okay, these slaps are really setting in here with Coach Killa. One, He's back now. Two, Round six. Three. Great slap from Coach Killa. Little bit of a club, but I don't think it's that bad. I don't think they're going to call it. But that was another one of those slaps that would have knocked out most middleweights. Wolverine is not your typical middleweight. He looks fantastic at 200 pounds. Bottom around six. One, two. Oh, and we've got another flinch by Coach Killa, and they're going to call it. Okay, what that means now is Coach Killa has received two penalties for flinching, and that means he's going to lose his seventh round slap. I'm not sure he realizes this yet. Okay, you can see now that he realizes he's going to take two shots from Wolverine. Coach Killa's face is telling the story. Oh my God, Coach Killa has just thrown in the towel. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a new double champion. Wolverine is back. Wolverine, your new middleweight and light heavyweight champion. And Coach Killa seems upset. Look at his face. This is a big loss for Coach Killa. But the winner tonight, Wolverine. Ladies and gentlemen, that was a fantastic main event. They're going to bring Wolverine his hardware. There's the middleweight title. They call her Daisy. And here's the light heavyweight title. Looking good, Ron. Well done.
I'm standing here with the one and only Wolverine. Big win in the main event tonight over Coach Killer. We had a little controversy there at the end, a little action. We got everything calmed down now, but not one belt, but two belts for the Wolverine. What's, what's going through your mind as we talk about the future of the Slap Fight Championship and, of course, the Wolverine? Uh, I plan on holding on to both of these belts, but I know we got somebody in line. He just won a tournament on this same show, so Great I matchup. mean, I look forward to that matchup. Yeah, I mean, so. Ready to take hey, on Lord, I'm not gonna lie, this shit was easy as fuck, bro. Hey. <laughs> just, just stay right there. You can go Wolverine ahead. Wolverine, who? Wolverine, who? I'm like, I'll take either one of those titles, bro. All right. So, so here's what we're saying. That was way easier than I thought, honestly. This shit was. <laughs> You'll try, buddy. You'll try. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, listen. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and separate you guys, and we'll uh, we'll see how the committee books this, and we'll look forward to the future. Folks, stay tuned for more Slap Fight Championship. If you're interested and you want to compete, visit our website, slapfight.live. I've been the Space Cowboy, Jason Jones. We have saw eight big fights. Five big knockouts, no serious injuries. You've been watching Slap Fight Redemption! Thanks for watching Slap Fight Championship Redemption. All of us at Slap Fight want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts for supporting our company and the growth of American Slap Fighting. My name is JT Tilly, and I would like to invite you to follow us on social media and be ready for some big, big announcements from Slap Fight Championship. On behalf of Jason Burgos of MixedMartialArts.com, the Space Cowboy Jason Jones, all of the fighters at Slap Fight Championship, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time on Fight.